Well, hey there, fellow Narragagers. So, I'm working on yet another project for the 58, and that is rebuilding this Gardner Denver 3x2x3 duplex pump to use as a feed water pump on the locomotive. So, why am I doing this? Well, we would like to be able to increase our boiler pressure <laughs> from the 180 psi that we have it set at now to 200 psi which is the original pressure of the boiler however the two injectors we use are pen berthy standard duty injectors which means that around 160 pounds they start uh their the ability to deliver to deliver water starts diminishing and then you have to keep tweaking it in order to get it to put anything in and once you get up near 180 it, they're practically useless I've been looking for other injectors that can work up to 200 PSI. Of course, they're hard to find. There's a high-pressure pen berthy. I've not been able to find any. Uh, we tried the, uh, the Garfield double jets. None of those worked at all. So the other thing I thought of as well, what if I just use a steam pump and a, um, and a heat exchanger and uh, just just direct feed from a steam pump. And then this pump here uh, will work up to 200 PSI and um, positively put water in, you know, whatever pressure we're at. You don't have to worry about it. And it will give us a third means of adding water to the boiler. So a little bit about this pump. We received it as a donation from the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum several years ago. Um, it worked. We ran it on air a little bit. Uh, it was missing. Well, most of the springs were rotted away, uh, so we need new springs for the uh, for the valves. That's not too big of a deal. I can find those. Uh, the other thing was that a couple of the piston rings were were broken. Uh, you can see this one here, the one in the middle is broke completely in half. This one got a chunk out of it. This one here has got a chunk out of it. <laughs> By some miracle, someone on eBay last week had four brand new rings. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, we were able to get four brand new rings for it. That's the good news, and that helps us on the uh, steam end. However, on the uh, water end, the rings that it used were these that are cut out of looks like micarta but these these look like they were homemade these do not look like um that they were that they came from ingersoll ran or not i mean i mean gardner denver and even so i i've looked i found a part number for them from gardner denver and i cannot find any listings anywhere online for them and <laughs> I'm frankly afraid to contact them because the part number I think it's a 60 D 14 um, is the part number and the part number 60 D 15 costs 400 and some dollars each I'm not all that enthused about finding out that it's probably gonna cost fifteen hundred dollars for a set of rings from Ingersoll from Gardner Denver <sighs> oh well, so maybe I can find someone who can make up some rings for me, um, and uh, that'll work. That'll work just as well, and won't cost Jesus Christ <laughs> so much money. Uh, so at any rate, uh, let's look at the water end here. So there's your two-inch bores. Now. They say that the ones that the, that these pumps that are made for uh, boiler feed service for water service had bronze liners, and these indeed are bronze liners. So we're good on that end. Uh, this let's see, I believe this is the uh, this is the the outlet side for the water, and then inlets on on either side here, and uh, this comes off. And so you've got four valves in there, and you have uh, four valves up here. And when each one of these makes a stroke, it it lifts up. I think these ones here lift up, 
and lets the water up into this chamber and down through this hole to come out through here. And then the ones in the bottom lift up when you're, when you're pulling water in so the water can come in here, up through those check valves, and then through here, and then out through these check valves, and then through the hole, and then out to the uh, heat exchanger, and then to the boiler. Pretty simple. Uh, so with a little bit of lapping, I can get these all lapped in, some springs from McMaster car, not a big deal. I just picked up a uh, hone, we'll hone these out. And assuming that I can get rings made, um, I'll be able to get that side together. The steam side's gonna be a lot easier. <clears throat> just hone this out, clean everything up, put the new rings on, put it all back together. Uh, there's our little slide valves up there. Once it's all together, just do the adjustments to uh, to get the slide the uh, valves timed. And unlike 58, this is very easy to time these valves. 58 is much more difficult. It doesn't, you know, steam locomotives don't have these nice little screws on there. And uh, you know, if you want to adjust the, the uh, valve, you just turn this a little bit and it moves it. It's like, that's so simple. Unlike 58, which involves machine work, blacksmithing work, and any of that to adjust the timing, which is one reason why it's still off. It's, you know, you do some work on it, you do a little adjustment, then you have to fire the locomotive up and run it again to see if what you did mattered, you know, worked. So it takes about a week or two, depending on how often you run, just to see if your little tweak worked. So that's why it takes so long to... Uh, to try to to try to get that right. Um, so anyway, the the last thing here is that uh, there's packing in here, a uh, little five sixteenths inch rope packing, then your little follower, and then you have the uh, the nut that goes on top of that. So I'll put new packing in there, um, and then clean this up, paint it, take the taps, chase all the all the threads and everything. Uh, then this will go over onto the locomotive more than likely it's going to go in the cab where I can get to it easily when we go to uh, to use it uh, and then the heat exchanger will be out under the left side of the uh, saddle tank and then pumping directly into the into the boiler probably in the left side check valve so we'll s I have no idea how long this is going to take uh, I'd like to get it done here sometime this season to get it on there because i would like to get up to 200 PSI. I think if we're up, going up the hill at a higher pressure, I think the locomotive will run a little bit better than it does now. Um, and certainly will give us a little bit more leeway to avoid popping off the safeties. Because you have to be at least, you know, 170, 175 to go up the hill to have enough power to get you up the hill at a good speed. Well, we pop at 180. So if I could, if we could be set up so that we're at 180, 185 or so going up the hill, and then we can keep that pressure up, then I, th I think the locomotive is going to run a lot better for our operation. But it all depends upon on getting this done. And uh, so, and here's the uh, this is the thing standing in our way is is making two inch rings. So. All right, that's all I've got for now, and I'll probably post another video later on once I get a little bit further into the actual work on this. All right, take care, everyone.